I'm going to take a few minutes to discuss my thoughts and observations on the AMT backup chambered in 9mm. My introduction to this firearm came when a friend of mine asked me to take a look at this gun when it wasn't functioning properly. Upon the initial breakdown and cleaning of this pistol, I discovered it had a broken firing pin and that started my learning experience into the AMT backup platform. So when I did get online to try to purchase a firing pin for this gun, I quickly realized that that was not going to be an easy task. There was zero firing pins available for this pistol online and I quickly found out that the company High Standard out of Houston, Texas had recently closed its doors in 2018. And when they did auction off their assets, they didn't go to one person or one company, so everything kind of got scattered in the wind. I did come across some research that suggested that their machinery actually got shipped out of the country, uh, and a few of their employees actually started another company called Interarms when High Standard closed their doors. The only replacement parts that I've been able to find for this pistol are used. And to make my situation worse, apparently the 9mm version of the backup is a bit harder to find parts for, uh, just due to the fact that the 9mm was the least popular version of the backup. As of right now, which is mid-2019, the sites that you can actually find used replacement parts for the backup are Jack First Inc., Numeric, Sluter Shots, Interarms, and of course eBay. Uh, there is one company that is selling new production springs for the backup and that is Wolf Gun Springs uh, but for some reason they don't make one for the 9mm. So eventually I settled into a daily routine of checking the sites for updated inventory uh, just in hopes that a firing pin would become available. After a while, I realized that I wasn't going to be getting my hands on a firing pin for this pistol anytime soon, so I started looking into alternative solutions. My first thought was to have one made by my gunsmith, but after talking with him, I realized that without the actual dimensions of a functioning firing pin, the cost of having that done was going to be too substantial. My second thought was to actually purchase a small tabletop metal lathe and actually create one myself. Uh, Brownells has a video on creating a basic firing pin for a hunting rifle and to me it looked totally possible if you had the right tools. So just as I was about to set that plan in motion, just by happenstance Inner Arms actually put a firing pin up for sale on eBay. I ended up spending 60 bucks on that, took the pistol to the range only to find out it also had some extraction issues, couldn't get through a mag without trying to clear a double feed, which the release being on the grip can be a task in itself. I ended up getting back online and purchasing a used recoil spring from Sluter Shots, which at the time was the only one available. Uh, I also polished the extractor and between those three things uh, got this pistol to function 100%. So after going through all of that to get this firearm to function, four months of waiting for a firing pin to come available and only to find out I had other issues that I'd have to use used parts for, I decided that I was going to share some basic information about the firing pin and recoil spring so that if there was someone out there like me that was looking for that, they could find it. Uh, maybe somebody that was in need of a firing pin and also had access to a metal lathe and had the abilities to create a firing pin or knew somebody that could. After the experiences I had with this pistol, there are a couple pieces of advice that I feel like I can give. The first one is I would try not to dry fire this firearm. Every video I watched, everybody is just constantly dry firing this gun. No matter if you think dry firing makes your firing pin weaker or not, do you really want to take a chance when a replacement part might not be available? 
I would even try to count your rounds when you're firing this gun at the range. The slide doesn't hold back, so it's extremely easy to dry fire this at the end of every magazine. The second thing I'll say is I believe that the recoil spring is directional on this pistol. It has a smaller end and a larger end. I was putting the smaller end at the base of the recoil spring guide rod towards the rear of the gun. It functioned perfectly fine. I had zero issues. So in the end, I don't think this would be my first choice in a carry pistol. Even though, in my opinion, any gun's better than no gun at all. I do think this is a very interesting firearm. And I also think that with a few precautions, something like this could last a very long time. With that being said, the amount of used replacement parts that are available now for this platform... That list is just going to get shorter and shorter, and the parts for this are just going to get harder and harder to find. So if you own one of these, I would take every precaution to make sure that you are never in need of a replacement part for this firearm. That's going to conclude my content on the AMT backup in 9mm. I hope someone out there got something from it. Feel free to leave your questions and comments. And stay safe and God bless.